this is Intoxicated Literature. Hello! Welcome to Intoxicated Literature. I am Daniela Drake. And I'm Evelyn Crow. <laughs> We are going to talk about Morning Glory Milking Farm by C.M. Nicosta. Yes, we are. This is a fabulous book. It really, really is. And it, it seems off-putting. I know that I have recommended to a couple of people, and they read the description, and they look at me like I'm a little bit crazy. And I get it. <laughs> because it's hard to describe to someone without making you sound a little bit crazy. I know you thought I was crazy when I suggested it. I absolutely did, and I have read it twice now, and I really love this book. It's a, it is surprisingly cozy. It is. It's a sweet love story. It's a sweet love story, and and it with like the a slowest burn in history somehow, which is also you know my thing. So, <laughs> I mean, only CM Nicosta can make something a slow. Okay, sorry. We have we need to do this. Yes. Um, we are spoilers. Going to, spoilers. Adult content. And profanity. Yes. So if you're not 18 and over, if you're not okay with spoilers, and you don't like people to swear, this is probably not the space for you. Vacate immediately. Vacate the premises. Cease and desist. But only CM Nacosta can make a slow burn out of something where they have intimate contact for almost the entire book. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true though i mean it is really interesting because this book puts sex work front and center but also makes it clear that it's not sex work it's not sex work it's it's sex work but not i think they make it's absolutely it's, not it's like it's a scientific technical job and that is what they're hired for um it but is. it is definitely also masturbating a minotaur so you are collecting their semen. Yes. Because it turns out Minotaur semen is the Viagra times 10 for human men. And of course, humans are going to commodify that in a heartbeat. Obviously, let's exploit any species we can y yes. that puts us <coughs> ahead. <laughs> Daniela! <laughs> You Bad. can't pretend like that wasn't funny. That was gold. Was gold. <laughs> okay. okay. Before we get too far into it, what are we drinking tonight? Because we're doing our themed cocktails. We are doing our themed cocktails, and this one is brilliant. <laughs> this was my idea, and I'm really proud of it. <laughs> this is brilliant, because it looks like minotaur cum, and I'm just like, we are drinking so much of this, y'all. <laughs> I cannot tell you. It it's is, adult chocolate milk. It is adult chocolate milk. It's but milk. it's with but it's with 360 velvet vodka, so it's clear, so the milk is still white. Yep, it's white. <laughs> but listen, this is delicious. So good. It's so good. It tastes like and we started milk. a little bit later than we usually do, so I am a little bit more intoxicated than we I are usually so am. So drunk right now, you guys. So you this no is idea. gonna be chaotic good. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are in uh, Camber Creek. Yes, and which is an adorable suburb. It is, and it's built for monsters. It is not a human town. It is built. for for monsters and is run by a werewolf family which you learn from subsequent books that is not a part of this book necessarily I think talks about it briefly but it's like i don't like think they talk about by. it in this one i don't remember it at Maybe. all mentioned i don't know because she hasn't moved there until the end i guess so yeah i know that there is a book by work I mean, like work's point of view yeah I think that's where you're getting some of this from. Oh, no, I have, this... I have read all of Sam Nicosta. So. <laughs> yeah, I've um, only read this one, so I'm going to try to keep you on the straight and narrow. I have read which all of them. I say try because I <laughs> it's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, I have read all of her books, including Run, Run, Rabbit, which is a darker one, which is from a werewolf's point of view where they have orgies in the in the mansion. Is it Run Run own. Rabbit, the 5K we do at Easter no, time? No, it is not, unless you are telling me things that I don't know about you, Daniela. Because... <laughs> are, you sh are you sure? Do you need because... to tell me things that are things <laughs> I don't know about? Oh, no, that's Run Rabbit Run. Uh... That's the 5K that I do with your husband at Easter time. Are you sure? <laughs> 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 I would like to take that out. <laughs> 
keeping that in. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Run Run Rabbit is actually a very good book. And I highly recommend it because she includes a whole section where the female main character is terrible at blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> is that the next book? It's not part of the series. She does like an after dark kind of thing where it's a little darker. Um, but she's bad at blowjobs. And the female main character is like, how can you be so bad at this? <laughs> and she's like, I don't know. It's like a funny cute kind of thing because he's still kind of enjoying it but not and she's like trying real hard like her best <laughs> is she trying he real is. hard he's hard anyway <laughs> <laughs> and like they keep trying to do the blowjob thing and it's just never as the greatest <laughs> it's really funny oh my god <laughs> it's pretty funny <laughs> all right so there's violet who has just gotten her doctorate. She needs a job. She can't find one in her skill set. She is overqualified and can't find anything, which is the millennial experience. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Uh, hands down. So she is like, okay, I will take this technician job in this pharmaceutical company where I will jerk off minotaurs. And she's watching videos going, I don't know about this. I don't know if I can do this. She's human. She's coming from a place where she's human and she's going, this seems like sex work. I am uncomfy. By the end of this book, you're going, this is not sex work. This is an acceptable part of the culture of this community. Because Minotaurs factor this into their financial plans. Right. They look at their expenses each month and they're like, well, we've got tuition coming up for Joe who just started college. And, you know, if I start doing bi-monthly morning glory (laughs) bi-monthly deposits (laughs) and they do get paid handsomely I mean they They do do. make a lot of money and it has become a part of male minotaur culture yes well morning glory is different morning glory milking farm is hands on (laughs) literally literally other um, <clears throat> milking, milking farms, <laughs> I guess, use machines to extract the so semen. only machines. They rely purely on machines, whereas Morning Glory ca- has kind of like a hybrid where you use your hands first and then... Well, they only use the machines to collect. Collect the specimens. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So... But you would have to because the amount... Well, but here's the thing. They have learned that the hands-on approach garners a larger amount to be collected. <laughs> well, that makes sense. I mean, it's more enjoyable, so... I have learned this because I've also read the um, Rourke's point of view <laughs> novel, whereas this is where I learned this. <laughs> so, yes, um, the hands-on approach makes them come more, I guess. I don't know. So there you go. The deposits are larger. So Violet is new. She goes in for her training, and she's shadowing a more experienced technician. Yes. Rourke is like, I'm a minotaur. I've done this. I've been here. He's a divorcee. Yes. He's older. He's like one of the... So they have like... They call them different names. They have like different names for the people that come in. The different names! Yes. So like he's like... The business guy who comes in, makes okay. his deposit, and leaves. I have a list. Yes, of all please the tell guys. me. Please tell me. Oh my god, we have the earners. Yes. Okay. They are only the there. Guys. They know exactly how much they're gonna make. They know exactly to the set how much they're gonna make that day. They know exactly how much semen they are going to produce and how much money they are going to make. Those are the ones that are really serious about budgeting. Absolutely. There are the clock watchers. Those are the businessmen who come in on their lunch break. They're just there to, like... Make, make their deposit money. and go. Yep. yep. They're the pop and goes. <laughs> They're the ones that haven't really done it before. They talk a good game, but they are uh, <clears throat> quick on the trigger. <laughs> and are you ready for this one? There are the good little cows. Oh, my God, the good little cows. This Every time I laughed so hard. <laughs> a fetish for them it's a whole thing they have special scrubs 
it's a whole thing. There's a lot of dirty talk that involves being milked <laughs> and like they're a milkmaid and it was oh hilarious and I very hilarious. much appreciated it. Even Rourke was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was on the floor hearing about the different kinds of, like, minotaurs. But this is the thing. That's part of what made it so real, though, because, like, I worked at Starbucks for a while. And, like, you did kind of start to come up with this lingo of, like, the particular clients that would come in. Like, the particular people that would order, like, just a coffee or, like, these really fancy drinks. or Like, you just knew what kind of person it was going to be. And maybe you didn't all have the same name for them, but... You all knew what kind of client they were. Yes. <laughs> so this made it feel so grounded in reality. 100%. Yeah. And so these technicians were like, oh, this is just, okay, this is a good little cow. We have to put on these scrubs. We got to use these gloves. We got to say these things. And then they'll just, they'll come right away. I mean, it was all a whole thing. So they knew it down to a, they have a test list. Science. Science. Yep. They knew exactly what it was. Here's the thing. Rourke, the male main character, was Violet's first solo minotaur. Yeah, so she was shadowing this person, her trainer, for like a week. And then at the end of the week, she's like, okay, your turn. And Violet's like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm not ready leave for it, this. <laughs> leave it to Sam Nacosta to edge us for the entire fucking book. <laughs> I know. And I know that slow burns, is, they're not your thing. I they are not my thing. I think they're she, great. She fucking had us going along. I think it was like 80%. It was a lot. It was a lot. Before they even met outside of the farm. And yet, they had intimate contact yep. for all of that because there was Violet fucking masturbating this guy Yep. for all of it. Because all of their contact was in this milking farm. Well, it was interesting, too, because... Like, even from Violet's perspective, because I didn't read the Rourke perspective book, so I'm I'm specifically only talking about Violet here. But, like, listening to her talk about, like, knowing, okay, if I mo- move my hand this way or if I do this, like, with his balls, like, it was so specific. And, like, having her talk about, I know exactly what he likes, but I don't know anything about him. I don't know his name. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it was so... It was the opposite of what you usually get from a book, from a romance. It was. Because normally it's like you start off with the name and you start off what they do and like you get to kind of know the person before any of this intimate stuff happens. Whereas this, you're just thrown right in to the end of intimate stuff. <laughs> She's literally looking at his cock. <laughs> yeah. Immediately. That is the first thing she sees. She has no idea what he looks like, even because they're in like different floors. Like, She's down in like the the like scientific like collection area. I know. She sees his cock and his hooves. That's all she sees. Yeah. And that is it. Yeah. It's so weird. And so he all he sees is like he doesn't even see anything. He sees like her mask. Yeah, cuz she's she's in like surgeon wear basically where she's got the cap, the scrubs, the mask, like the whole like sanitized Get because up. it's a technician. Because it's science. Like, they're collecting a biological sample. This is not something that can be contaminated because they're going to use it in pharmaceutical stuff. All they know is that both of them have, like, an extra spark. And so both of them, it's so funny because both of them are like, okay, we need to be professional about this. You're right. We, <laughs> we are in a professional environment. I cannot be weird about this. Exactly. And be like, I love you. Yeah. I feel, like, a special connection to you. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. Because how do you even handle that? How do you handle that? It's like even weird when you're at a restaurant and you're talking to a server. So now this guy It's weird when you're like, co-workers and you're like, I want to make a move on this person, but I don't know if it's reciprocated. So Rourke is like, this woman is literally jacking me off. How do I say, I want to have a date with you? Exactly. Like, how how do you start that conversation? <laughs> also, on Rourke's part, like, he thinks that she's, like, a child. He has no idea how old she is. Yeah. He can't see her face. She He doesn't know. He asks her at one point, are you, are you grown? <laughs> yeah. How old are you? Are you an adult? Because I'm having feelings that I'm not comfortable with. And she, of course, is like, 
Yes. <laughs> I've got my PhD. Thanks very I much. I am fully adult. <laughs> Thank you for asking. And he is relieved. <laughs> fully relieved. <laughs> I think also my favorite thing about work is that he's very passionate about the, um, the, the thing that's going around town about who can wear pants and who can't. It's funny because... Even in Morning Glory, because I know that in the in the subsequent book from his perspective, like he it probably goes more in depth. But like even in this one, there's like a whole paragraph from him who's like talking about like if monsters want to be like humans, then they have to wear pants like that should be the the rule. <laughs> he is so upset about it. And who should wear pants? They talk about it so much. <laughs> it's so funny. I think that's so and funny. He, he was like, look, if you have external bits that can dip into my soup, you need to wear pants. <laughs> I feel like that is a fair determination for who should be wearing pants, right? <laughs> I don't want your external bits to contaminate my soup. <laughs> there's a whole, like, debate going on in this town about, and they're going to vote on it. And I'm just like, this is amazing. I want to vote on this because this is so... I would vote on this. I don't want someone who has external genitalia serving me food. That is fair. That is fair. Without pants? No. Without pants? No, thank you. At least have, like, underwear on or something. 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 Even a loincloth would be better. (laughs) I do love Rourke, though. Like, he is such a gentleman until he's not, and it's appropriate. And oh you're God. just like, he makes her come for the first time in public in a restaurant. And it's so funny to me because she, she and her like vampire friend who's helping her get ready for all her dates <laughs> and stuff, who friend. I love gaily or whatever her name is, <gasps> who they meet at that adorable cafe, the black sheep beanery, which also the name oh five God. stars. Love it. So work suggested it. Because it's like, oh, you cannot be drinking that swill. Because she was with- buying this coffee that was like $7 a cup, and it just wasn't very good. And it wasn't like, good. I haven't found a coffee shop that I like And he's yet. like, no, you need to go here. And she's like, but the line is so long. I was like, no, it's worth it. Go to this coffee shop now. Stop drinking that shit at that other place. So, of course, she goes, and she meets this cool vampire friend who helps her. She, like, helps her kiss wax before all of her dates. Uh, all these things but she's awesome i think she's hilarious uh, i really loved their friendship and then like she is going on these dates and and nothing's happening he's not making any move on her Mark is like the slowest mover because he's waiting for her to give consent which i love so much at the same time but also oh my god fucking make a move my dude she's had her her hands all over your fucking cock already Mm -hmm. dude Come on. Give her a little something. A little something. And at the same time, though, the way he talks to her Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was chef's kiss. Yes. Absolutely agree. It's like, all you had to do was ask, honey. Exactly. You're in control here. And I'm just like, okay. I know. (laughs) I know. Oh, my God. And the first time that they go back to her apartment, and he's like, this bed is way too small to do anything. I cannot do anything in this apartment, but I will service you as much as you want. Yes. And you're just like, oh, okay. (laughs) The giggles. The giggles. The way he talks to her, like, the blushes, and then, like, the hee hee hee. I mean, it's like, okay. I I do... I do have to say, so I don't, I don't read a lot of monster romances. It's not something that I gravitate towards. I have been branching out because of your recommendations in this I, podcast. I, I am a bad influence on Daniela. <laughs> I have to admit, I have been like going. I wouldn't say bad, just you know, an influence. An influence. <laughs> but I do. I am sometimes too literal and too practical. So sometimes I'm reading these books, and I'm like. But he's so much bigger than her, and how do they kiss? Okay, here's the thing, though. I am not a size queen. No, no, no. I am not either. Not at, no, no, no. I am not. No. I do. I. I feel like that would be uncomfortable. I don't think I would enjoy it, frankly. So every time he was like, "We have to like go slow and go like slow work and you up it to work. it." And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm like, you're giving me anxiety because I feel like it's going to be painful. <laughs> I don't want to have to work it in. <laughs> no, but I'm just thinking, like, he's got a cow's head. I know. How does kissing work? 
And like I personally, for me, kissing is one of my favorite things. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there going, making out with a cow doesn't. I don't know. I don't understand it. <laughs> not that it makes me not like the book because I absolutely love this book. I adored no, I it. Know. I thought it was super, super cute. And it's only like periodically where I like to have this like step back where I'm just like, but. <laughs> and the thing is, though, is it's not so much the kissing thing. Yeah. The thing is, is what won me over yeah. is how much he enjoyed the downstairs no and this was also my thought because i was like i could see how that would be so good yes because his tongue is a little bit more rough like there's a little bit more texture and it's wider and it's wider like there's more area yes and and maybe a little bit more forceful like i feel like that would be definitely to her benefit yes and this whole thing about like let me do do you want to know what happened to the virgins who were sacrificed oh my god that was one of my favorite parts where he's just like listen virgins were sacrificed in the minotaur and they never came back because they wanted to fucking be there yeah they did yeah (laughs) they did the best orgasms of their life yeah they did they never wanted to go home baby (laughs) i laughed for 10 minutes i thought that was so funny i was like yeah get (laughs) him Minotaurs are built a little bit differently. They have that little knot on their cock, right? Uh-huh. So, like, so it's not just a size differential. Like, you also have this extra thickness, thickness to deal with and like yeah. accept. And I listen for me, it doesn't sound that comfortable, but she seems to really like it. She so maybe seems, I'm wrong. You know, I don't know. Humans who go into Cambridge Creek. They never kind of come out again. And that is one of the things that her vampire friend talks about. It's like, yep. listen, once you try a monster, you don't <laughs> go back. <laughs> and like, it's really funny because she's like trying to tell her family who's human, like about her boyfriend. And she's trying to explain it. And her family's like, okay, we're trying to be supportive here, but we don't really understand. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I am not judging whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you off, whatever. Well, this is the thing, too. I'm I'm like, listen, I'm very close to my mom. But also, would I ha- would we have that conversation with mom mm. that says, like, listen, this is the best sex of my life? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think she I wants that. I We don't want that. I don't think I would. So that I understand mom. the hesitation to just be like, no, but but for real, <laughs> this is just great for me. Let's I just might have that, that with. You. Yeah. But I don't think I would have that with my mom. That's fair. I might tell that to mom on your behalf. Yeah. But, like, she would never say it to you, and she would pretend like she never heard it. Because that's how mom is. (laughs) And she would be so supportive. Like, she's read my books, but she's never talked to me about the sex scenes. So she it's like that. loves your book. She's your biggest fan. I know. But she will never talk to you about them because she knows that you'll be embarrassed. Exactly. Yeah. Well, she has talked to me about them, but she has not talked about the sex scenes. Ah, oh, she's so cute. I love her so much. I know. She's the best mom ever. I know. She has talked to me about, like, trauma and, like, how she thinks oh. the characters develop and everything. But she oh. has not talked about the sex scenes at all. Oh, cute. I love it. I know. I love it. So, I, again, we would not talk to her no. about that aspect of the no. relationship. No. But also, he treats her like a queen. Oh, my God. Like, he absolutely is head over heels for her. Right. Yeah. There's never a doubt. He is a little bit older. And even he acknowledges that at yes. some point. He's like, listen, I know that, like, we're not exactly equal. I am firmly established in my job. I make a lot of money. I definitely make more than you. I don't want that to be an issue for you. Because he want, he doesn't want her to feel like he's not supportive of her or that she doesn't have any agency. Right. He doesn't want her to feel like she has to quit her job. He is not judging her based off of the work that she does. But he also wants to be like, I can spoil you because I am at a place in my life where I can. Exactly. You can't pay for this because it is not in your budget. Exactly. I can pay for this because I am older. And I'm not judging you for it. Like, this is just a statement of fact. I want to spoil the fuck out of you. Exactly. And I'm gonna. So just fucking let me. And it's kind of hot, you know, coming from someone who, like, grew up without a lot of money. (laughs) 
Do you know how many times I thought about having a sugar daddy? Do you have any idea? Oh, oh believe me. When I first moved to L.A. and I was like, these rents are insane. <laughs> Daniela, do you have any idea how many times? When I, when I learned that there were fucking dominants who just did financial shit, there are financial doms. I was ready. Who will pay you to spend their money. Where do I find one of those? I'm like, excuse me? Sign me up. I will spend all of your money. <laughs> I am ready. What's ironic, though, is we're all talk. I know. We I would will not never spend do that. Our money. Nope. <laughs> We'd be like, listen, I rearranged all your budgets so that it's way more efficient now, and you're saving yeah. $7,000 a month. You're welcome. I will, I will 100% <laughs> do that, and then I will go to your house and do all of the services, because that's how I show my love. Exactly. <laughs> and then they will be like, that's not, that's, that's that's not, not what, what I, I want. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I don't think this is going to work out. <laughs> it's not the stuff I was looking for. <laughs> and this is why I can't have a sugar daddy. <laughs> I'm too practical I'm sorry. for it. I know. I failed. I'm sugar really baby. sorry. But listen, you should really consider investing in like a 401k and a, and a Roth IRA at the same time because one is taxable and one is not. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean I I yeah. But you know, maybe just an idea, you can get a sub yourself. <laughs> Ooh. This is the thing though, I cannot dominate. <laughs> <laughs> not I'm not. Not in a physical way. Uh, no, I'm not good at it. You give them like a hundred bucks. I'm not good at it. I, I'm like, is this what you want? Do you want something else? Do you need more money? <laughs> Are you happy? Is everything okay? <laughs> I'm I too much of terrible. a people pleaser. I know. I, I am the same way. I yeah, agree. I can't do it. I'm much more of a sub than I am a dom. <laughs> I need a dom to keep me alive. <laughs> I agree. I'm totally the opposite. There's no way I can be. I saw this great video from this guy who was like, "Listen, people with anxiety need per- permission to just exist. Like it's they're not. Totally like true. it's not. It's not. Like you're not thinking like the way that they do because they literally need you to be like, no, it's okay that you have this food that I made for you. Like it's it's totally true. true. They need permission for everything, and it's so true. <laughs> so when Rourke talks to her, I'm just like, oh. Oh, oh God! For real, <laughs> the whole every everything he says to her. Yes. I'm like, okay. Yeah, and the first time that she goes to his house and he's just wearing the apron, I'm like, okay. I know. I was like, whoa. Where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! And then he has all the rewards for Morning Glory. <laughs> that was so funny. So okay. It's like it's like, it's a rewards program where it when you donate a cer- certain amount of specimen or you make a certain amount because of your donations, you get like a coffee to go cup or you get a mug or, a or you get an apron. Of lube. <laughs> <laughs> the special lube that they use in their collections labs. <laughs> Extra thick. Or a shirt that he wears while he mows the lawn. <laughs> and he's got all this stuff. And he's got... Okay, but what you don't know is before he met Violet, he had a bit of an addiction to Morning Glory because it was hands-on. Which you could see, like, that actually makes sense to me. If you're lonely and you don't have anyone in your life, And you can go to this place once a week or even twice a week and have someone touch you. Right? In an intimate way. Yeah. I understand how that could happen. For sure. I mean, if if, if what you're used to is basically a vacuum. Because every other place that collects these specimens is basically a vacuum. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden a place opens up and it's like... People. People. Yeah. Or monsters. Yeah. You know, because it's not well, all I mean, humans. like, people in a general sense. Yeah. Yeah. Hands. Yeah. Touching you. Yeah. That could be addicting. Uh, yeah, for sure. And actually, he had, he, that is a, a, a he had just, ugh, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whiskey. Yes. 
Wait, it no. Is, well, um, were we drinking vodka? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> this is going off the rails, man. <laughs> I love it so much. I know. I know. In um, the Rourke's point of view, oh, okay. that it was an eviction. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he had to stop. Oh, doing so that was one that. of kind of one of the plot points, like one of the yes. themes of that book was yeah. addiction. He was going too much, and he had yeah. to stop. Because in this book, he goes once a week like clockwork until he doesn't because he meets Violet and is like, whoa, who is this amazing creature? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Poor Rourke. I do love Rourke. I think that he's one of my favorite. Um, he's a sweetie. Yeah. He's he's just a sweetie. He's just, he's a partner. Yeah. So there's a there's a thing about monster romance that the monsters are there because human males human human men are found lacking yes yeah yeah i mean there there is this thing where even in this book where some of the first conversations it's two equals Mm -hmm. and even when you read romances just straight human to human romances even in the first meeting, there's this idea that the men are better in a way. Like, they think that they're better. And it's just hard to be excited about a story where where they're not partners, where they're not working together, where they're not equals. Yep. And I think that that's part of the draw of these monster romances. And they're, yep. they're growing on me, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm enjoying them. Yep. Thanks so much. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> but they are they are different, but not. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's just really interesting the way that they play out. The the monsters are allowed to be human in a way that men are not allowed to be. Yes, that's a, a perfect amalgamation of it. Yeah. There's no toxic masculinity. There's yeah. no fear They don't of have to break down these things that they've been trained to believe. Yes. Yeah. In order to allow themselves to feel emotions. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I definitely agree with that. So there you have this you have Rourke who's free to be whatever he wants. And in this case, he wants to give his partner orgasms in public. I do love it. I do love it, too. Like, it's it's an interesting topic, too, because she starts out living in the city and loving being in the city. And it's like this, like, hustle and bustle. But also she does recognize that there's not really a sense of community. And then she starts driving out to where the farm is. And it's in the suburbs. But there's this sense of community. Even yeah. in, like, the coffee shops and stuff. Like, she goes out at lunchtime. Like, she's just, like, it just has a different kind of feel. So by the end of the book, she's like, do I even re- really want to stay in the city? Maybe this yeah. is not something that I want to be in. And I get it <clears throat> to an extent. I mean, like, I live in a big city and I have I have a good community, which is awesome. Right. But also, just being able to find that place where... I may be a little bit different. I don't quite fit in where I am, but this place was literally built for people that were different. Mm-hmm. And this is somewhere that I can, can feel like I fit in. And so that part to me was really, really sweet. And, and it does feel cozy. Like I, it's hard to describe because there yeah. are, there's not like one particular thing where I can be like, that's cozy, but it's just a vibe. Like it's just pure vibes. That makes yep. it cozy. You know what I mean? People are generally nice to each other. Um, the setting is very laid back. Like, the stakes are not super high. So you're just kind of along for this kind of romantic, slow burn story. And it's very satisfying. Like, it's yep. not a long read, but it makes you feel good when you finish it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I really enjoyed it. And I've read it twice now. And I enjoyed it just as much the second time around. I thought it was super cute. I'll probably read the one from Rourke's perspective because. I will say that Rourke was so funny just because he was so worried that she was <laughs> under 18. Yeah, I could For see a that. long time. 
I could see that. He's like, is she over 18? And he's like, ask her. (laughs) I need to stop this now if she is younger than I think. (laughs) Say, okay. (laughs) And she was so confused, too. She was like, yeah. I am. I did like it, too, because she was described, like, her her hair is very curly. She's allowed to have kind of this wild, curly hair, which you don't see that often in books. And she's also described as being pear-shaped, mm-hmm. which you don't see that often. So I really, true. I liked that she was maybe not your stereotypical beauty in a romance. Yeah. Like, she was just a normal person. And, and that made me like her and... And resonate with her a little bit better. Um, and Rourke was a divorcee, mm-hmm. which is also not extremely common. Yeah, it was that whole thing. Like he had a ring in his nose, and she had to ask him about it. She's like, "What does that mean?" I've always wondered. And he's like, "Well, <laughs> you're married, but I've been meaning to take mine out because I'm not married anymore. Don't worry about it." <laughs> that whole misunderstanding was so brief. It was. It was so brief. It was brief, but it was powerful at the it same was. time. It was. It was intense. Yeah. Because they run into the each other in the coffee shop and then they're both under the impression that they're waiting for someone else. Like it was It was really fast. Yeah. No, because at the same time you're like, no, we're not doing the miscommunication trope. Yes, Stop that is it. my least favorite trope. I hate that. Just have the characters talk to each other, damn it. <laughs> then he's like like the next day or like even later that day, I think it was like just later that day they're like, oh no wait. Just kidding. We're going to talk. But I love it, too, because they're dancing around it. (laughs) Like, neither one of them wants to just flat out be like, were you on a date? Uh, It's like, oh, who were you meeting? Oh, it was just my best friend who's a woman uh and was, like, giving me advice. Oh, yeah. I was just meeting my neighbor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but, But what is that? thing in her nose means like well it you know it means that you're married but this i'm not married anymore yeah i mean to be getting it out I'm, I'm and then the out. next time that she sees him it's not there anymore it's not there anymore yeah it's great yeah 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 it's, i thought it was exactly. it was a really sweet story i really enjoyed it again not that long definitely worth a read super sweet very enjoyable absolutely highly 100% recommend. agreed yeah so uh what are we gonna read next we are reading, I actually know this, ha-ha, <laughs> Wolf Gone Wild by Juliet Cross. Yeah, we are. It's a slow burn, which is your favorite. Another one? <laughs> They're all slow burns. Okay, to be, fair, to, to be fair, you picked this one. I picked the next one. So. I guess it's only okay because she, she has his hands on his cock like the entire fucking <laughs> I really liked Wolf Gone Wild, and I think that you'll like it too. So I probably will, but it's at the a same fun time, read. Just like, oh. It's a fun read. So we will see you next time. I am Daniela Drake. And I'm Evelyn Crow. And this is Intoxicated Literature. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Intoxicated Literature. Drink well, friends.